Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, this time with tips number 482, drilling large holes with a DC motor on the drill press. To bring you up to date, this is a whole series of videos. Go back and watch the top ones there, and number 482 is what we're dealing with right now. This is my old Walker Turner drill press. It's one of my favorites and I've made some modifications to it, albeit they may be temporary. This is the original motor that I took off of the drill press with the step pulleys on it and I replaced it with the DC motor. I did indeed install a tachometer on the top of the Walker Turner drill press and in fact the production of this video was delayed by two weeks as I ordered this one in uh, with purple lettering. I hooked it up, spent half a day on it and it absolutely does not work. It just gives a fictitious reading of 288 no matter what I do. So I was bitterly disappointed and I wasted twelve dollars and it's probably not worth trying to get my money back and so I took this off of my variable frequency drive and at least it's on here temporary, that's just with, with wire ties, but it, but it does work great. And let me turn it on real quick and then you can see that I'm at, right now, 295 RPM. And let me just show you, this is the top speed of the drill press at this time. Right about 1000 RPM. And then the lowest speed is... Well, I'm at, what, 60 RPM, but it has absolutely no torque at that speed anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it's handy to have this tachometer on there, and it's better than that handheld Stuart Warner tachometer that uh, I showed in a previous video. So this won't appear uh, in the video, but I'll be referring to the readings that I get on it. This is the direct current motor and it's three-quarter horse. This is the control box for it. This is the pickup here for that tachometer that I just showed you. There's a little magnet on the step pulley. And looking at it from this view, you can see the controller on and off, and then this is the speed control. Looking at the tachometer right now, it's at 115 RPM. It is now 445 RPM. And around 600 RPM right now. The whole purpose of this video is to talk about large drill bits. This is a one inch drill bit drilling into steel and getting it at a fairly slow speed. Now originally the slowest speed on this Walker Turner drill was 600 RPM with the motor that I showed you a few minutes ago. With the DC motor now I can really slow it down greatly and <clears throat> the question is do it, does it have enough torque to turn this in steel? I'm currently at 390 RPM. This is Cleveland Twist Drill's ready reference and among uh, the data in here is a table of cutting speeds for fractional size drills. Now in general I like to drill and cut at about a hundred feet per minute. So looking here at one inch drill bit right here and moving on over to the column that is a hundred uh, feet per minute you can see that it calls for a speed of 382 uh, RPM. Now this tachometer is interesting in that it can not only uh, determine the speed of a motor but with this little wheel attachment I can directly determine using the red scale, that's the inner scale here, the feet per minute. See that? FPM. So putting the rubber tire right on the motor or, or on the drill bit not this neck down part, but right here, and not on the flutes either, of course. 
which would ruin the little uh, instrument here. But let me show you at 390 RPM here how close we are to. And I'm able to stop it there and hold it. I'm at 105 feet per minute, which is really what what that's calling for uh, for a one inch drill bit. So I can directly measure that on a lathe too, or, or any uh, any machine. I can measure the uh, feet per minute. I'll do that on a bandsaw in the next video, or a couple videos away. The next video I'm going to cover hole saws, large hole saws, and uh, how to drill with them. So now let me uh, clamp a piece of work to the table, steel and I've already drilled pilot holes in them and I'm going to slow it down even well, no I will try this at 100 feet per minute and drill a hole in steel let's see how this works and I really need a larger pilot hole than this but I this is an experiment this is all an experiment quarter inch pilot hole one inch drill bit now this drill bit does have flats on it for the Jacob's Chuck to grip on. I'm going to use a little oil and if it's too much for this then I'll back down and, uh, and drill another pilot hole perhaps half inch but it'll be interesting to see this because many people said that this DC motor will not have the torque to turn something like this at a slow speed. Not that this is so terribly slow and I'm going to try it at a slower speed as well. So let's, let's see what it does here at 390 RPM. And notice that the work is clamped to a wooden block. And I am able to stall it. Okay, I'm going to stop and drill a half inch hole. This is a half inch bit and I'm not changing the RPM. That worked fine. Now back to the one inch drill bit. Very easy to stall. Very easy to stall. I switched to a three quarter inch drill bit and I raised the speed to 500 RPM which is about what that chart called for for three quarter inch at 100 feet per minute. And that uh, drilled pretty well, the three, three quarter bit, in steel now. Uh, I would have been able to stall it, I had that feeling, I, I, I noticed it did slow down just a little bit, but that worked pretty well. I'm going to move this down to the next uh, quarter inch hole and see if I can go right in with a three quarter bit. With only a one quarter inch pilot. Now I'm at 255 RPM, which for a three-quarter bit equals 50 feet per minute, which is really a slow cutting speed, slower than what is necessary for mild steel. Again, a quarter-inch pilot, 
I, I just know that I'm going to be able to stall it, but let's see what happens. Yes, it's quite easy to stall it. Let me turn it up to about 500 RPM. That's 530 RPM, which is a little bit more than 100 feet per minute. that wasn't bad but I did have to baby it or it would slow down or stall so the result here is that I either need a larger pilot or the real answer here or the real uh, analysis tells me that the torque is not there with this DC motor I really thought that it would go right through without any problem but it does not have the torque that I expected I'm at 100 RPM, also with the three-quarter bit, I know there'll be no torque here and it'll be so easy to stall. But for a special thrill, take a look at the Weston ammeter, and you see that it's about two and a half amps right now, but watch it as I start to drill, see what happens. Watch the ammeter, I expect this to stall out here presently. I know that's way too slow a speed. Let me crank it up to 200. Again, I'm just playing. There's 225. See the amp meter is all the way up to uh, 6 amps. Matter of fact, it's pegged. and it is drilling all right although I am baby aiming it I'm gonna stop and change the range on the ammeter I've changed the range up to 15 amps at seven and a half amps That's about the maximum that it will draw, even at the stalling speed. stop there so it doesn't get too boring 
Even though I know that I will not be able to drill large holes very effectively, something I don't do very often anyway, I am not disappointed with the fact that I now have a variable speed drill press, which will serve me very well for my smaller holes, which is 98% of the work, uh, uh, coupled with that DC motor, and even uh, as an extra thrill, I have the tachometer on the top, so, which I had to rob off of one of my other machines. But... I am happy, and this is the final setup, but yet I have that old motor should I ever need to reinstall it. Okay, you experienced two, count them, two YouTube firsts today. First of all, did anyone ever show you drilling with an ammeter? <laughs> did anyone ever show you with a tachometer the actual speed of a drill in cutting feet per minute? Probably not. Let me know if anybody did, and I'll, and I'll take a look at his videos. But the conclusion here is this. I am bitterly disappointed that I, I do not have the torque that I thought I would have. People warned me. People told me that. But, of course, oh, no, Tubal Cain knew better. But yet, I think you know, if you've done any large hole drilling, what a struggle it is to drill a deep hole in a large diameter, and the way you have to step your way up constantly and if you ever drill this with a hand drill, a uh, portable electric drill, you realize how much work it takes to uh, produce a hole and all of those chips. It's for a, And this is a small late machine. It's not ever meant for these big holes. The spindle and the bearings and the chuck and everything else is uh, undersized for this type of job. But in my shop, my home shop, my drills are uh, this size. I generally step to the milling machine if I need a little more uh, power because it has back gears. So, I hope you enjoyed what I did show you here, even though some of it was a failure. Watch the next video again, which I'll be doing similar experiments only with hole saws, possibly in wood and metal. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Tubal Cain saying so long for now.